Hey, what's up guys? So today let's talk about rifle light placement. Now, rifle light placement kind of depends on what you're doing with your rifle, uh, how you have it set up, what you're planning on doing uh, future-wise with it, and kind of what your, your application is, right? Like, what, what are you going to use it for? Now, um, if, if you haven't noticed, uh, <laughs> most of my rifles, if not all, uh, all of my rifles, have laser devices or have the capability of putting a laser device on in case I don't have enough or I'm lending them out or something like that. So, um, so be aware that yes, you can adjust it based off of like your gear and stuff. Uh, but personally for me, I have them adjusted towards my light or for my lasers. So they're, they're offset for that reason. Now, some, some of the options that we have uh, as dudes that put lights on rifles are uh, which side do we put it, how high or low that we put it on the rail, and then also like what are you going to do um, in the sense of depth on the rail, like how far are we going to go to towards the muzzle. Now, um, most of my rifles, guys, I, I shoot suppressed, and when I don't shoot suppressed, I usually put like a warden on or like some kind of blast uh, mitigation device. So um, when I have uh, any kind of tool that's further from the rail system, so meaning this protrudes about, well, I would say like two inches or so from the rail, I'm gonna make sure I shoot with some kind of device that protects my stuff. Uh, not in the sense that they can't take it, but they get dirty, I don't like cleaning things. So uh, it's kind of like, it, it's almost a lazy man's thing for me. But for some people, they don't like to shoot suppressed, so they're not gonna use that kind of stuff. Um, if you look at like one of my buddies, Don Edwards, he doesn't shoot suppressed very often. Most of his stuff is, it stops at the rail so that he can kind of protect his equipment and make sure he doesn't, uh, shoot so, uh, so far forward or have his stuff so far forward that it gets dirty and starts to clog up the ability for those tools to work. So lights, as you see, they get carbon all over the lens. That's going to affect your output, obviously. Uh, lasers, same concept. If carbon gets on there, it's going to affect the output. So base it on what you're doing and base it on what you're using. Now, uh, compensators, I will say, usually carbon up things a lot faster than like a flash hider. But going further, right? Now, going back to the light, when it comes to putting a light onto my rails, uh, I, I kind of look for specific things. And here's some of the options. Right, uh, we have on on the three o'clock side of my rail when I'm looking at it, nine o'clock to you guys. Uh, I like to put them there the majority of the time. So what you'll find is most of my rifles are set up this way. Now, if I get issued something and I can't put it that way, I'll find another way. No big deal. I'll adapt. But if uh, if I can and I have a choice and I can buy the equipment specific for doing something like that, I'm going to do that because it gives me something that I enjoy, which is consistency. Where my lasers and my lights are in the same side, give me consistency whether I'm using laser stuff and I'm doing laser stuff or I'm doing white light stuff. It's all on the same side, so using corners, using, using thresholds, whatever it is that I'm doing stuff around, I can consistently work around them with either tool and not have to like, be using a laser for a little bit and then if I needed to use light have to go further if the light is placed somewhere different uh, which I'll show you in a little bit so just something uh, to kind of pay attention to most of my stuff is set up this way I set up another rifle to show you an alternate way so here's my sage PWS uh, 14.5 and the way I have this one set up as uh, you can see the light is on the opposite side. So it's on the nine o'clock for me, three o'clock to you guys. And one of the reasons that some guys use it that way is because they try to avoid pressure pads. That's okay, if you're trying to avoid a pressure pad, you don't trust them, whatever, no big deal. Uh, it's, it's not a bad method, it works really, really well. I will say I use this method a lot overseas because the tail caps were so much more robust than using a pressure pad back in the day. And so I, I lean towards this exact almost setup with a peck on there and, and a different light, obviously, at the time. Um, but with this setup, you're, you're using quite a bit of, uh, or some pretty good tools and trying to set things up to help you out and not have to use 
a personal switch for your light. The problem I found with this setup is that my thumb, when having to move from, let's say, laser, right, if I was using the actual box laser, all the way to light, you can see where my thumb has to go and has to move my hand. I have to actually shift my hand around the rail. So just to, just to get there, no big deal, right? All in all, no big deal. But it is something to think about where when I'm using the pad and I had to go to, a, let's say, a white light pad, it's not that big of a difference and it doesn't move my hand all that much. Or if we look at like my other rifle, boom to boom. So I'm able to kind of switch from these buttons a little bit easier and not have to rotate my hand around. No biggie, something to train, right? Something to play around with. The other thing I didn't like about this setup or I don't usually like about this setup when laser is coming from one side because that's where this laser comes out from and light comes from this side, the problem with that is now that consistency that I was talking about. So if I was working around some form of a barrier or a barricade of some sort with laser and illuminator and stuff like that, well, I need to protrude or, or lean further just to white light at some point. So not a big deal. Like I said, it's something we can get away from, or I'm sorry, we could train to and, and learn to use, but just something to throw out there to make sure people understand the, not consequences, but the, uh, the realities to using your light on this side. No big deal. Some people just prefer it and that's cool. Another thing to kind of think about, like we were talking about was height of the light. How high or low are we gonna go on the rail? And now high or low on it, it really doesn't matter too much. And I'll explain why. Um, when going up or down, it doesn't change the shadowing all that much from suppressors or, or barrels. And shadowing is just, a, it's really not important. What's important is what you're looking at or what you're looking for. So don't worry too much about that shit. But what you do wanna worry about is if I put it lower, right? And I've seen lights that, that protrude past the bottom here, is that if I need to base my rifle on something, like lay it on the, the hood of a car, or if I'm uh, leaning it against something else, like whatever, like anything flat, a wall, whatever, to get some stability, well, if I put it down there and my light is lower than my rail, well, guess what? My rifle's gonna tilt. Depending on how far I'm shooting, that may be a bad thing. So wanna be aware of that little teeter-totter point that you can get or make by putting your light a little bit lower. So just something to think about there. Now, another, another little uh, thing I will say about all my light setups, and this is a recent change since like October, and I mentioned it in my uh, shooters, um, or how to be a, a good student, like, or how to be a student series that I have on here that you guys can look up. But one of the things I looked up or what I started changing was making sure that all my lights have some kind of constant on, right? So if I'm gonna use clickies, make sure they have a clicky cap that I can constant on. If I'm going to use, like on this mod light, I have a, uh, a pressure pad that I use for my light, but I also have that tail cap to give me, and I can't remember the nomenclature, the tail cap to give me a clicky on so that I can have momentary if I want it and I could also have constant if I want it. Now, some people will ask like, hey John, why do I need a constant in whatever way? Um, I will say like, I didn't think I needed one for the longest time. And uh, when doing one handed manipulations of my rifle, and let's say like an arm is injured and I still need to work through things, and I have to use my rifle because shit's still far away. Well, something something to think about is having to use my white light on my rifle and maybe having to base it on something like, let's say, like the car, clicking my cap on and then coming up with one arm and working the problem. So if I was basing it on something to click that on, I can do so versus where momentary ain't gonna work so well. Um, using a handheld would work kind of thing, but that's a whole different kind of monster. So. Just something to think about. This is my preferred way of setting up uh, lasers and lights when it comes to like box lasers. So I usually have a, pot, a pad for my uh, light and uh, I use the fire buttons on lasers. 
the uh, the lights, like I said, I usually keep them off to the other side. It also gives me room for my hand to move up if I wanted to a little higher or keep my hand a little higher. So just something else to throw out there and, and kind of uh, explain to you guys too. Now, like you saw, like all my light setups have momentary, have constant, right? Have momentary, have constant. So try to keep that same theme throughout all my setups. That way, even though it's a different light, right? This is a cloud defensive rain and I have the mod lights on those other two. Well, doesn't mean that I can't have the same kind of functionality in the switchology that I have. So just something to think about guys, nothing too crazy, but when setting up your rifle, just think about those certain circumstances that you need to pay attention to for positioning your light high, low, forward, back, and also what other gear you're using around it. Now, if I didn't have lasers on all these lights, or I'm sorry, all these rifles, I would go ahead and put my light a little higher up personally, just so that I had a little bit more room for my hand to be underneath. Because you can see my hand has to stop where my light is. If my light was where my maul is, right, a little higher up, <clears throat> like the, the cloud owl, or like the uh, like any of the those offset um, mounts that you can do for the mod lights. If you're using something like that, you can get your hand all the way under there. I prefer having a little bit more finger space, <laughs> phrasing, but, uh, <laughs> but if not, like you're using lasers and stuff, we have to work around that to an extent. No big deal. Um, I shoot pretty well like this, so I'm, I'm okay with it. So figure out what works for you guys, set up your stuff as needed. Um, I did back in the day before I was able to buy a few mounts or try new things. What I did was grab my light and duct tape it, or really I just blue taped it. So you could use some painter's tape. Um, I don't have any over here, oh yeah. So some painter's tape, you could use some of that and wrap it, uh, wrap your light around the position you think you're gonna want it. And you could try out different things and then try and find the mount that's gonna work for that. So just something to think about if you were trying to position your light in different spots and wanna try new things without having to buy 50, 60, $70 mounts and, uh, and try new ones like that, you could go ahead and, and tape it on there with like painter's tape that won't leave a residue and you could get an idea of where your light should be. Uh, I will say I try to push my lights as far forward as possible, uh, no matter the rifle, no matter the setup, um, as long as I'm, wearing, I'm using a suppressor like we talked about. So hopefully that helps guys. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and put them below. Um, light stuff is a class that I teach and I really, really enjoy teaching low light stuff, especially night vision, but it is definitely one of those things that I think uh, a lot of people should have a light on their rifle as well as on their handguns. Um, but to each your own. So take care guys. Uh, hope this helped.